What up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Man, today we'll be doing a breakdown and review of the movie The Batman. Um, I recently sat down to watch The Batman. It was quite an interesting film because as a fan of the Christopher Nolan trilogy, I came into it with a lot of expectation, especially after the amount of disappointments that we had post Christopher Nolan when you look into... um the Batman, like the bat, the Ben Affleck Batman, that for me was one of the major disappointments. The Justice League was a disappointment. Batman vs Superman was a disappointment, just because of the way that Christopher Nolan ended his Batman's with the Dark Knight Rises. You know that was such an epic ending to a story and such an ending to a trilogy that he set the bar super high of expectation and. Coming into the Batman, um, I'm one of the people who watched it with skepticism, but with a lot of hope because a lot of people on the internet, the reviews that we were getting of the Batman was, it's such a great masterpiece. It's such a great show to watch the storyline, you know, and I feel like the Batman, um, the bar was also raised, you know, by the Joker when the Joker came out and how they told the story of the Joker. And so when you were, when, when they were partaking on such a project, it really feels as if, you know, we were <laughs> trying to write the ship. And like when you have Su Suicide Squad that came out as well, like last year, how they corrected the ship for DC Comics, you know, the Batman had a, it's it's like DC Comics, what they did with the productions is they set up the Batman to succeed. There was no way that <laughs> they could fail. So the bar was not only as high as the trilogy, but it was not also as low as the the Batman vs. Superman or Justice League that came out, you know. So and how CW has just been ruining DC <laughs> DC comics for me. Um when I went into the Batman after watching a lot of reviews, um, I went in knowing that it was it was going to be dark. That's one part I knew. Apparently, they, they didn't use a lot of lights because Gotham is just dark like that. And the first thing that hits you is you have to listen because if you're not paying attention to it, you can miss on the storylines in terms of where we are at. It's a lot of new characters, you know, super used to... His name, I believe, is um, Michael Caine. I don't want to butcher his name. Who played the butler is different. Is the is the villain from Black Panther. Forgive me for not knowing these actors' names. But I do know that Robert Patterson, whom I'd like to say um, the vampire was playing Batman. And how it starts is, you know, there is no, there's chaos in Gotham. The bat is nowhere to be found. And you have these shots where they, they draw you into the story where you have these kids attacking this man on a train whom I believe ends up being the main villain in the show. But I feel like that's how they introduced it. And as you're watching the movie, you, you're trying to understand what's going on because the bat, he operates from the darkness, he operates from the shadows which, you know, for me always brings me back to the conversation that Bruce had with Bane, you know, when they're speaking about, I am the League of Shadows, I am this and that. And those are like little references to the Dark Knight Rises and, and that trilogy. But watching the movie, um, I had no expectation, really, because I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know who was going to be the villain. Because when you look at Christopher Nolan's shows and i i really don't remember how the batman begins goes but in the dark knight the joker is introduced in the first scene in the dark knight rises bane is introduced in the first scene as well whereas with this one it takes a minute before we get to who the villain is and then we realize it's the riddler so it's all about the riddler and as as the story continues you the way they wrote it it's it, it takes you through this journey where you're being introduced to characters that you know you know and 
I felt for me, I didn't understand what was going on for a long time because the first action that happens is you have um, the mayor, the mayor is murdered and then they have to solve these riddles and that's how we introduce the Riddler. And not for not being a, forgive me for not being a comic fan and for not having read <laughs> before, but I feel like when you're making such movies, you're catering to both audiences, the comic book fans and the non-comic book fans. And when, when you do that, it's you're making a movie for all of us to have an understanding of what's going on and for to have an understanding of um, what we are watching and to follow through. We move through the storylines, you know, um, of trying to understand who the Riddler is, what the Riddles are. And all of a sudden, you have the bat back. And it's crazy how they treat him like a vigilante, but he essentially works with the police the entire show. And they all feel some type of way, but he's the one who helps the police. So in terms of storyline, as I try to follow it, it's, 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 it's very um, interesting. And I would like to read to you guys the, the plot of the show. And... <laughs> yeah, so spoiler alert. All right, so there's a plot of this show. is on Halloween, Gotham City Mayor Don Mitchell is murdered by a man calling himself the Reader. Reclusive billionaire Bruce Wayne, who has operated for two years as the vigilante Batman by now, investigates alongside the Gotham City Police Department. Lieutenant Jumps Garden discovers a message that the Reader left for the Batman. The Reader kills Commissioner Pete Savage and leaves another message for the Batman. So... The way that they tell the story until then is we are all discovering what's happening and you're trying to figure out what the hell is actually going on, you know. Um, Batman and Gordon discover that the reader left a thumb drive in Mitchell's car containing images of Mitchell with a woman, Anika Koslov at the Iceberg Lounge, a nightclub operated by Penguin, mobster Cameron Falcons, lieutenant. While the Penguin pleads ignorance, Batman notices that Selena Kyle, Anika's roommate and friend, works at the club as a waitress. When Anika disappears... Batman sends Selina back to the Iceberg Lounge for answers and discover the Savage was on Falcon's payroll, is his district attorney, Jill Carlson. And the one thing that also struck me on this is, if you guys remember in The Dark Knight Rises, um, in Hathaway, she played Catwoman in that. She had a friend. She had a friend who she stayed with. So there was a lot of similarities for me, which we were like, oh, this is pretty cool. The Riddler abducts Coulson, straps a time collar bomb to his neck and sends him to interrupt Mitchell's funeral. When Batman arrives, the Riddler calls him via Coulson's phone and threatens to detonate the bomb if Coulson cannot answer three riddles. Coulson refuses to answer the third and yeah, 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 yeah. The gist of it is what the Riddler set out to do was um, he, he had an agenda of exposing people of what Bruce's father had done, you know. And as you're watching it, you're trying to understand what the <laughs> the villain's motive is as the characters, as, as they're telling. And I can understand why people are saying this is a genius. But the one thing that tends to happen for me on YouTube when you're watching these reviews and reactions is like people follow a mob mentality of where they're like, oh, this is a great cinematic uh, shot or whatever. But... I feel in terms of story, the Batman lacked a lot because it failed to engage you into understanding what was the motive. And it's sad because you have to compare it to the other Batmans. You know, when you when you look at the Dark Knight, you you knew when the Joker showed up, he he his only goal was to expose the Batman. You know, he wanted to remove his face and show the world who he was. And he had an agenda to free the, the things just to, to, to cause chaos. With Bane, you had an idea of what he was going after and you were interested and invested in his methods. Whereas with the Riddler, it was very difficult for me to understand what he was trying to do, who he was trying to expose. And it's like it takes you on this journey that at the end of it, it's like, what was the reason? Because at the end of the show, when he blows up the seawall and Gotham drowns, it's like, you know, again, when the Dark Knight, <laughs> that was the sense of in the Dark Knight Rises, the bomb that kept on going around. And 
the bat had to take the bomb away. So it makes you think that, you know, they had a massive opportunity to do something special. And I guess when you're served something that's as difficult as that, it, it's hard to come up with a story that will sell the audience and, and make you believe in, in the franchise or whatever they're trying to build. But I feel like if, if I had to rate the Batman out of 10, I'd give it a six because it's a solid effort. But for me, it lagged in story because I feel like they didn't really do the Riddler justice. They, they they didn't give him the justice that he deserved in terms of character development and allowing the villain to show us why he's being a villain and, and, and what what we were going for. And when you have a sense of what they did with the Joker in the Joker, it's you got to understand who the Joker was. But in this sense, it's we don't really know who the Riddler is and, and, and what his motives were, you know. And I feel like they got shot. But I guess you can only do so much in a two-hour movie. You can only do so much. But I feel like Hollywood has lost the touch of, of creating proper villains. You know, how they did it with Thanos was amazing. You you got to understand his motives. And with the read, like, for me, it was very difficult. In as much as you are seeking revenge, it's like, really? <laughs> That's why you're going through all this 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 is what you're setting out to do and this is the chaos that you would achieve but in general it's a very good entertaining movie that you can watch and you know sit back if you have time and enjoy but to say i was impressed um i don't think anyone will be, ever be able to match the christopher nolan trilogy at this point but i feel like um these guys that did the batman have it was a solid effort and yeah, I can't wait to see what they do next because this was an interesting story. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction and review of The Batman. Let me know which other movies I should be checking out. Um, Yeah, this is the new type of format we'll be going with, you know, to avoid all copyright strikes and stuff. So see you in the next one.